So in the last video, I described the difference between a Pydantic model and a ORM model. And uh, there's a couple of things I actually want to do with our Pydantic model. So we've just got one right here where we define what a request, what a post should look like. Uh, and we use that in a couple of places. Uh, so if we go down to create post, we can see we use it there. So it's going to define the structure of the data that we receive from the front end when we want to create a post. And I think we also provide it for um, maybe updating a post. Yep, we also use it for updating a post as well. So what I'm going to do is I want to create the schemas, or I want to move the schema in this case. Remember, this is what's referred to as a schema. I want to move that to its own file just so that we don't clutter up our main.py file. So I'm going to go under app. I'm going to do new file. And I'm going to call this schemas.py. And then within schemas, if I go to my main.py file, I'm just going to cut this out. And we can paste it in here. And there's going to be a couple of things that we have to import. Uh, so if we go to our main.py, we definitely need Pydantic. That's really all we need, actually. So if I go there and then paste that into there, we should have no issues. And then, you know, this is going to actually break our application because uh, we need to actually import this specific schema. So if I go into main.py, uh, we can see here I'm doing from dot import models. So that's going to import everything from the models file. But we can also then import schemas as well. And so now to actually access this specific class post, we just have to go in our main.py file and the reference schemas.post. And so anywhere we use post, uh, which should be right here, we can do schemas.post. And then in our update post as well, we can do the same thing. This is going to be schemas.post because now we're importing it from another file. And what I'm actually going to do is we're going to restructure this a little bit. So what I'm going to do is remember, these are regular Python classes. Uh, and so we get all of the abilities that we have when it comes to inheritance, uh, when you come, when it comes to working with these classes. So what I'm going to do is uh, we could define a couple things, right? We could have one for, uh, we could create a class for create post. Actually, that should be capitalized. So create post. And then that's going to extend base model. And then this is going to have all of the fields that we need from the user when it comes to creating a post. And so that's what this would be in this case. And then remember, we also need to handle updating posts. Uh, and so we could create another model for that. So in this case, I could call it update post. And once again, that's going to extend base model. And uh, when it comes to the the fields that we use for an update post, uh, it would be the same exact thing, right? Whoops, that should be right here. And I don't know why it's keep doing that. And in this case, there wouldn't be a default value for published because we want them to explicitly provide each column. Uh, and so at this point, right, we could then have two different classes for each specific request. And that's a perfectly valid use case, because when it comes to creating, they should provide a certain amount of fields. And then updating, it might be completely different, right? Because, um, you know, let's say in our application, we wanted to make it so that the user can't ever update a post. They can only update one property, and that's the publish. So they can just change whether it's published or not. We could remove this. And this is going to make it so that the user isn't allowed to provide any other fields. They can only pa um, pass the published field. So that's why we would want to create different um, models uh, for each of the different requests. But what I like to do is instead of having uh, one for create post, one for update post, uh, and then one for the, you know, we have to eventually create models for the response. What we're going to do is we're actually going to delete all of this and we're going to create a class called post base. So I'll do class post base and then base model. And so this is a regular class. We can just copy all of these fields. And then we can extend that class. So I can take this post base class and I can extend it and say class post create. I want to extend post base. We can say post base. And so it's going to, by default, automatically inherit all of these fields. And so we can just say uh, for creating, we could just say pass, which means it's just going to accept whatever post base is. So post create is essentially the same thing as post base. But then we can create a brand new one called uh, class, I don't know, post update. And that's going to extend post base. 
and we can say that uh, for updating, uh, we can pass in whatever specific fields we want to add in as well. So that gives us flexibility because we can make use of inheritance. So for now, I'm going to remove post update and we're just going to keep it as post create uh, because, uh, you know, updating and creating is going to be fundamentally the same. Uh, and that way we can just kind of piggyback off of this post based model and then just create brand new models based off of this. So what I'm going to do is go into my main.py file and then for schemas, actually, let me save this. Then my main.py file, there's no longer a post. It's going to be post. Actually, it's going to be create post, post create. I'm going to do the same thing for update as well. That was the update actually. So then the other one is for create post. And then this is going to be schemas dot post create. All right. And then the last thing that I want to do in this video is we're going to just delete this test route that we had defined when we were learning about SQL alchemy. We don't really need that anymore. And then in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to tackle sending a response back. All right. And as I mentioned within the slide deck, right, just like we can define what a request should look like, we can also define exactly what a response should look like. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to define a pydentic model for a response for what a post should look like when we send it back to the user so that uh, it sticks to a very specific schema and then we don't end up sending data that we don't actually need to send to the user.